Hey, Chris, could you uh, drop your email again? I was in the last session. I tried to send you an email and I got kicked back to me. Oh, of course. Okay, thanks. Because the because the um, question I had, um, well, I'll explain it to you in the email. But thank you, guys. Sure, oh, thank you. Okay, we have about two more minutes before we start. I'll be hanging out in the chat if you have any questions, or I will stop the presenter if it's important. If not, we'll keep it the question to the end and sum up at the end with uh, some of your questions um, that are relative. All right, so see you in about a minute. We have about a minute to start. Sounds great. Oh, I'm trying to... I'm trying to send my. Is anyone seeing my ch uh, the ch in the chat? My email. Nope. Address? It's not. No. Sending. No. Blank button pressing. <clears throat> it's Ciavolos, right? Yeah, Ciavolos at discoveryed.com. Mm -hmm. Oh, this chat is not letting me send a message. It should show up now. Yeah, I see yours, but it's not letting me send anything. Try, um, try to leave in a room and come back, see what it does. I'll try that. All right. It's Chat working now for you? Oh, you're muted. Oh. Yes, I just dropped my email in the chat. So it looks like we are good there. All righty. Ready to rock and roll? Miss Kelly, are we ready? Yep, let's get started. Sounds great. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, I'm going to let Christian kick us off. Yes. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining today. Um, are you able to see uh, just a, a quick little screen there with the uh, uh, the DenStar program slide? Yep. Awesome. Well, uh, welcome uh, today uh, to our session on uh, engaging, empowering, and energizing your students with Discovery Education. Uh, my name is Christian Avalos. I am your partner success manager here for Discovery Ed. Uh, so I am your Go to for anything and everything Discovery Ed. Uh, I've been uh, working with Discovery Education for a little over three years now, and uh, I actually live in Anne Arundel County, so I am local to you. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that you know that you have access to me. If you have any uh, questions, uh, if you have uh, any ideas uh, on uh, any of the content that you see here today, but not just today, just on a regular basis. I work closely with Stephanie and uh, Carrie uh, just uh, with your uh, Discovery Education Everything. And uh, I have he here with us Brad Fountain. He is the uh, Senior Director of uh, Teaching and Learning here at Discovery Ed. He's going to be navigating and uh, exploring uh, your Discovery Education resources with us today. Uh, but I quickly wanted to highlight uh, a program that we have here at Discovery Ed. Uh, with the, uh, the the DEN network, and we have a DEN STAR program. The DEN is the Discovery Educator Network that you have access to uh, with your Discovery Ed platform, and it's really just an easy way for you to collaborate with other teachers worldwide. Uh, you're able to share content, you're able to pull from, from their content and see how they're keeping their students engaged. Uh, so it's a really great program that we have that's a part of your uh, platform, and we actually have two 
events annually. We have our Den VertCon in the fall and in the spring, similar to eCoach Day, uh, but we highlight our teachers and uh, the good work that they're doing in the classrooms, and they're able to kind of share what they're doing to make sure that they're getting the most out of the discovery education resource. So uh, you can scan that QR code if you're not already a Den Star. Uh, you're able to become one, and uh, you're able to share that with teachers as well. But I'll go ahead and pass it off to Brad. He is going to uh, navigate us through our journey today. Thanks. Thank you, Christian. I appreciate it. So welcome to everybody. Thank you guys for taking time out of your busy day. Um, would love to get a sense of kind of your familiarity, your comfort level with Discovery Education. Uh, good question, Stephanie. No, it does not expire. It is permanent. I mean, even 20 years old? <laughs> <laughs> Even 20 years of okay. part of the, the team, right. yes. Okay. Awesome. So um, just a couple of things for you guys. I want to ask you guys what your, you know, kind of comfort level with discovery education is. Um, and so I'm going to ask you to rank yourself between a one and a five. A one being, you know, I've heard of it. A five being I could train Brad on how to use it. Um, so put in the chat window where your comfort level is between a one and a five. Some threes, some twos. I love it when people break out the fractions and the decimals in there. It's awesome. A one, a three and a half, three, two is great. Awesome. All right. So here's my challenge. Anybody who rates rate themselves a three or higher, um, if I don't show you anything new, I want you to call me on it. Uh, my goal is to make sure you see something you've never seen before, as well as find things that you can utilize in your schools with your teachers um, and make sure I got the right group. Uh, my understanding is we're working with grades six through eight right now. Um, so if that's correct, then we're good. If not, I will pivot quickly. <laughs> so we'll focus in on grade six, eight. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And I learned the, a little while ago that I have to, in Google Classroom, I have to share a tab. So um, I'm going to share my tab so that audio works better. Christian, can you confirm that we're seeing the screen okay? I've got it clear. And if you have any questions at any point, feel free to drop them in the chat. I am okay. monitoring the chat uh, so that I can interrupt Brad and make sure we get them answered in a timely fashion. And I do not mind questions as they come to mind. Please put them in the chat window. You will not throw me off. You will not mess me up. Um, so, yeah, please um, keep me posted. All right. So here we go. Let's get started. And the first thing I'm going to highlight for you guys is just some resources you're probably not aware of. Um, and I'm going to go. I, I do these differently every time I, I dive into one of these things. So. The first thing I want to highlight for you guys is there's an educator support section right here on the upper right hand side. And educator supports are designed to help you if you're getting just trying to get started with resources, how to find and save things, um, how to you know assign things to students, um, how to utilize um, you know things for our tool called quiz. We're going to be talking about a little bit how to use studio, how to access what we call ready to use lessons. Those are pre-made lessons we've already built out. Excuse me. And then there's timely resources that include, you know, things you can use for tomorrow's lessons, um, corporate community partners, community favorites out there, and then hot topic issues, which are dealing with, you know, English language learners. And there's a whole center of content for English language learners, professional learning for you as an educator on how to best support students through um, language development as English language learners step-by-step -step guides on utilizing content for English language learners, instructional support material that can be beneficial for English language learners. Those are all there as well. So just know that there's a ton of resources out there. And all of this is found, again, at your homepage under the educator supports. And at any point in time, when you want to get back to your homepage, you just come right here where the little D icon is, and that takes you back to your homepage. So you have that at your fingertips quickly and easily. Now, obviously, most of you probably know us for video, and, and I'm not going to ignore video content for the whole time we're together, but I'm going to go beyond and outside of video to start with. The first things that I want to showcase for you guys is if you type in the word interactives, one of the things you'll find in here are science interactives, math interactives, social studies interactives, English language arts interactives that are all available for you. We also have a um, partnership with FET. These are science-based, so you'll see those as well. Um, and what I can do is I can go in here. Let's we're going to go math for a moment. 
If I'm, I'm a math teacher, you'll see it broken down by K5, 6, 8, and 9, 12. So let's go 6, 8 since this is our grade band that we're working with. And I can find a couple of different things here. I can find what we call the instructional activities. These are pre-made lessons using the interactives that I'm going to show you in a moment. And there are the FET interactives here for graphing lines, slope intercept form, um, expression change, fraction, function builders, um, equality explorer using variables. And then there are fun little activity skill builders on um, using multiplication, um, using integer, uh, integer addition to boost speed, a variety of things you can utilize in your classroom. And then ratio and proportions, fractions, um, solving equations, algebra, probability and statistics. All these are built out for you. So you have those. But let's take a moment and just talk just for a minute about these pre-made lessons. These here are using a tool we have called Studio. Now, Studio is something you can build um, your own lessons in. And we'll highlight that in a few moments. But these are what we call ready-to-use lessons. And I'm going to show you a few examples of these in just a moment. But we'll start with the math one. There are teacher notes. And then there's kind of giving an introductory um, section. There's text that's here. And now the text may be a little high for some kids. You know, I imagine you probably have kids with special needs. You have some kids who may be English language learners. You may have some kids even in your classrooms who read below grade level. So how do I make this accessible, the text to them? Right over here on the right-hand side is something called immersive reader. Any text that's on the screen, whether we type it there or whether you type it there, will enable what's called immersive reader. And so what happens is if you click on or a student clicks on immersive reader, it pulls all of the text out. And now a student can read wherever, any words they want or whole sentences. A luo on oh, sacred wow. Hawaiian land has awakened two mobs of zombies. And I can, they can change from a female to a male voice. They can adjust how fast or slow it reads. If they need it, they can increase the font size. Some students with visual issues, that can be beneficial. They can change the background color of the font. Certain students with special needs, different background colors can be beneficial to fit their needs. Right here where it says reading preferences, for some students dealing with things like dyslexia and other special needs, too much text on a screen can be overwhelming. So here I can narrow it down just to three lines of text on a screen, or if needed, just a single line of text. They can still re use read aloud, but it focuses their attention just on the text area that they need to or the line of the text that's being read aloud as they go through. You have the ability to translate this into multiple languages, about 70 different languages here. The last group we were with said French um, is one common one outside of Spanish. Any other languages you want me to highlight that you can think of that you come across? So wait and see what comes up in the, the uh, chat window. Farsi. Farsi? Yes. Got to see if we have Farsi. We do. So I can go word by word, see it in, or here in English. I can see it in Farsi. We don't have it uh, audio yet in Farsi. Um, I'll show you the French. What it'll, We're working on adding that in. So if I go into French, it'll actually read aloud in both English. Sacred. And French. Sacré. And then I can translate the entire document from English to French. You get a read aloud in that. Now, if I go into Farsi, it will translate the entire document into Farsi, but it just won't do the read aloud yet. We're working on that's something that'll be coming in. But this is a great, powerful tool, not only for students, but my background is all in education. Um, I've been with Discovery for about 18 years, but prior to that, I was a teacher and I was a principal. And I'd have a lot of kids who came to me who were either partially or fully bilingual students. They were amazing kids. They went home to amazing parents. And these parents wanted nothing more than to help their child out at home, but they needed content in their native language. At the time, back in the early 2000s, I didn't have things in that could easily translate into multiple languages. So it's tough to give them the resources they needed to be supportive of their child. Now parents can access this information in their native language. So it's a powerful tool to have right at your fingertips at any point in time. So again, anything that's in our studio board allows that. 
So now let's go in just for a moment into the little activity. I'm going to open up this math interactive to let you see what that looks like. Fits in perfectly with if you're a fan right now of um, uh, The Last of Us. You got the little zombie theme going, so that's always fun. And now we can say, use the slider to select values for your group. So I can actually mo choose my own values, or I can say, surprise me. And now I've got 25 and 15. So I can enter a factor of either one of those. And right now I'm going to put in three. And I see that it gives me not quite even factors for 25, but it does give me even groups, not group factors, sorry, even groups of 15. So three is a factor of 15. Now, what if I did two? If I do two, now I see that it's not really a factor of 25, and it's not really a factor of two. Hey, Brad, so you've, really got a, you've got to switch yeah. tabs. Uh, we're not able to see anything but the actual uh, uh, zombie. Oh, see. Yeah. There we go. Sorry. Thank you, Christian, for clarifying that. So I'm, I'll model one or two more. So I'm going to go continue. <laughs> So here we'll put in a factor of five. You'll see it groups them out. And now I can see under five, that's it, it's actually a factor of both. And so I can keep working through these as I try out different strategies or different ideas. And when I think I know the greatest common factor, I can see that five is a common factor. Is it the greatest? Well, I can keep trying, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it in. I think it is. Check it out. And if I get it right, you feed all your zombies. They're no longer upset with you, but if you get it wrong, the zombies are mad and they come after you. Um, so it's just a fun activity you can use, again, to have students practice that greatest common factor activity. But thanks, Christian, for telling me it wasn't showing. All right. Is this, are you back to seeing the zombie luau screen now? Uh, we've got no, uh, no shared screen now. All right, hold on, let's share a screen again. Let's go this way. All right, how about now? There we go. Okay, cool. So again, those are available to you, those pre-made lessons that are um, within um, our interactives. You'll see those for science, for social studies, for math that are all built out. You, will, I also want to highlight for you very briefly, go back up here, that you will have English language arts interactives. Now these are primarily K-5, but there are times when they may be beneficial for you when you're dealing with um, spelling or um, you know antonyms, um, things like that. Some of these first ones are sight words and they're gonna be lower elementary, but if you're looking at parts of speech, um, punctuation, things like that, these can be beneficial for you um, even at the middle school level, filling in background knowledge for kids who may look need support with those strategies that may be missing earlier on. So you'll see English language arts one, in addition to math, science, and social studies. And again, just doing a keyword search for the term interactives will show you all of our interactive channels that you have available to you. Again, quick, easy strategy you can use right at your fingertips. Another one I'm going to show you is one of my favorite series. There's a series we have out called Demystified. This one's a little more science focused. This is actually created in-house, but it's a great way to introduce a scientific concept to students. So, um, and the other thing I'm gonna highlight for this is the ability that these can be translated into other languages. So there are pre-made lessons around these, right up here. We'll come to those in a few moments. Then they're broken down by earth science, life science, physical science. Now I'm gonna go to one of my favorites, one of my buddies here uh, at the company, Martel King. He's gonna introduce energy. So if I need to talk about types of energy. It's a great way to just start the opening discussion about my getting my kids some background information around energy. I'll, I'll turn the sound off after it gets started for just a moment. I want to show you some of the other features for um, supporting English language learners. So we'll start off there. Now you see me. Now you don't. Could you imagine what life would be like without this bright little bulb? Many of us use light so often, we don't even think about it. You may know that a light bulb needs energy. One type of energy goes into the light bulb and other kinds of energy come out. What are the differences between these types of energy? I have an idea. Let's shed some light on the subject and demystify those types of energy. 
I'm going to turn the sound off as I get started back up here. And I want you to see there's closed captioning here in a variety of languages. So if I need this in French or some other language, click on it. And now the audio will be in English. Many types of energy are on full display when we do something as simple. But the closed captioning is in other languages. And again, that's supportive of both parents and students who are processing this information. So let me pause for a second. I'm going to ask you a question. If you've ever shown a video, which I hope all of you at some point in time have shown a video to your students, um, but if you've ever shown a video to your students, how do you know they retain the information you needed them to or wanted them to from that video? So in the chat window, let us know how you would main, make sure that the students had retained the information you needed them to from a video. What do you do? Comprehensive questions. Uh, providing a viewing guide with the questions. Uh, pause and reflect questions and questions during the video or discussion after. Okay. Great. So those are all good strategies. Um, so one of the things we found, heard from teachers is they would love to be able to ask questions directly on the videos as their um, students are watching them. So that's something we built in a little over a year ago into our service. If you put any video, it doesn't matter if it's demystified or any other video in our service. This holds true for every video in Discovery Education. If you click on build an activity right up here, this will always be available on any video. You'll see slideshow and you have video quiz. I'm gonna click on video quiz. And what this does is it takes the video, when I click the word next, and it pulls it into our quiz maker. And what this allows me to do is, as I'm playing the video, I'm gonna turn the audio off just so I can have some uh, time to talk over it. I can at any point in time, click on, add new question and I can put a question here. Maybe I want to put a, you know, a um, type of fix it real quick. So what are some types of questions you know already? I can do a short answer. I can do a poll or I can do a multiple choice. I can choose exactly where I want that question to appear. Maybe I want to put it right here at the four second mark. When I, I can choose how many points that question is worth, when I'm ready, I can save and play. And what's gonna happen is at the four second mark, cause that's where I've chosen the video, the question to go on the video, it's gonna put a little circle right there at the four second mark. And then it's gonna keep playing the video. So you see that dot there now. And now when I'm ready for my next question, I can put this in here. And I'm going to say, what type should they apparently of energy hours light bulbs? And I'm going to do a poll or a multiple choice. And I'm just going to type silly stuff in here for right now. Alien energy. Um, nuclear energy or coal energy. I'm just putting any random stuff in there. Choose the correct answer. And again, add that in. I can keep adding questions as many as I want up to one per second. Obviously don't put one per second. That's not a good idea instructionally, but you get the idea. So I can keep adding questions. Now, when I'm done creating my quiz, I have a couple things I can do. Let's say that Christian and I are both teaching energy. I can share this with him. And then he can take my quiz, use it exactly as it is. That's fine. Or he can say, you know what? I'm going to modify this. I want to change it a little bit for my class because I, I want different questions in here. But he's got the foundation already built that he can then just change the one or two questions he wants to change. I can see the quiz details, which tells me what type of questions are there. I can view what it looks like as a student, and I'll show you that in a moment. But then I also have this launch capability. When I click launch, I can either assign it, and in that case, the students will get a link, and that link will then um, allow them to open up the quiz on their own. They can watch the video, and the video will play on their computer, 
And on the right side of the video, the questions will pop up whenever they get to one of those dots. So that's great for independent practice, for a homework assignment, small group, working collaboratively, all that works fine for assigning it. If I want to, I also have the launch now option, which is right here. And in that case, what happens is the video will play in front of my class on my device. And so as the video is playing, the kids are watching the video. And whenever it gets to one of those dots, the video on my screen pauses. And on the computer, the kids computer screens, the question pops up. Regardless, either way, whether it's the assign or the launch now, as students, students submit an answer, it comes directly to me in my dashboard. And I'll see all of my students responses as they're make, excuse me, as they're seeing making those responses. Any questions about the the quiz tool? I did want to highlight um, uh, that link for that quiz is the I just dropped it in the chat is shareable within any learning learners management system like Brightspace or Google Classroom. So yes. uh, you're able to send that out to your students through your respective uh, LMS. In Not addition, I'm huh? sorry. In no, addition to being, um, probably screen on. In addition to going into the chat, is there any place else that we can see their responses? Can we print it? Can it go to a form or? Yeah. So once you've got it, then you can export it out if you'd like to into a CSV or Excel file. That does that help? Yes. Thank you. Sure. And so this is the type of question student, when a student see that they're doing it on their own independent, this is what it looks like to them. The video's here and the questions pop up over on the right-hand side. So that's just, that's just student view. All right. So again, quiz is a really cool feature. Um, there are other things you can do with quiz that I'm gonna show you in a few moments, um, but I'll wait till I get to back to my, my own account before I do that. So I can show you some cool features with that. All right. So quiz, we talked just a little bit about with regard to using videos in quiz. Um, I'm going to go up here to what's called and type in what's called instructional activities. The keyword search you can do. And there's a whole channel. Now channels are curated content collections. And these are great to kind of put onto your homepage. And I'm going to show you here in just a second how to put these on your homepage. But instructional activities are what we call ready to use lessons. I'll go to middle school, six, eight. And here you'll see featured ones. So obviously highlighting things like celebrating Black History Month for the month of February. And we're just into March, so that'll move a little bit. Things that have been recently added. One's focusing on science. One's focusing on social studies. Some on math, some on health, and some on English language arts. And... These, again, are ready-to-use lessons pre-made. Now, before I go into one of these, I'm going to show you. You can add this whole channel so you don't have to remember how to find it or have to type it in every single time you want to use this channel. If you come right here to where this little ribbon icon looks like a ribbon from a prize you might win at a science fair, click on this where it says Add to My Channels. When I do that, if I go back to my home page, you have a list of channels right here. And here's that one I just added. If I want that one someplace other than the bottom, I come right here to where it says reorder, and I drag and drop it wherever I want on my list. So I can add channels as much or as little as I want to and organize them any way I want. So if I'm a math teacher, I may want all my channels to be math, that's great. Or English language arts, do the same thing. So you have those right at your fingertips, but let's take a little deeper look at one of those. Let's go back into instructional activities, go to grade six, eight, and let's just pull up one on, let's do, we did math earlier, so let's do an English language arts one. Let's do Maya Angelou, whittle it down activity. So here is the activity. Watch the video and use what you've learned to complete the activity. While watching list words you hear that are important, Watch and review your list. Identify three words that you believe are the most important. Write two or three summary. Uh, uh, write two or three summary or reflection statements that include the three words you identified. 
Again, this can be read aloud right here. There are teacher notes that give you strategies for how to use this effectively in your classroom. And if you want to modify this, maybe you want the set uh, a fourth activity for them to do. You can make a copy of this. And when you make a copy, you now have your own version of it that now I can edit any way I want. I can add additional information. I could add another slide if I wanted to. So I'm going to add a slide and I could add a separate a whole little section here and add a whole nother activity if I want. So you can continue to add things and you have the ability to add content from Discovery Education. You can upload something. So if you have a video or image you want to use from your own collection, do that. Um, you can add buttons that link to other places in Discovery or to other websites outside of Discovery. You can add in short answer questions, multiple choice questions, multiple select questions. Block is an opportunity where kids can actually upload content. So if they, you want to have them do a diagram of something that they've learned today around, maybe they did a hands-on experiment in science class, or maybe you did something in social studies where you want them to recreate a map around um, a, an important battle that took place or an important um, model of government. You could have them actually upload that image with a block um, opportunity here. So those are all things you can add into studio boards. And if you modify or create your own studio board, you can share these with other teachers. So I can just type in another teacher's name here in my building, or if I don't know their name, or I can't remember what it is, I want to share it outside my building, I want to share it to someplace else in our district, copy the link, and now I can actually send that link to somebody else, and they can get access to this board. So those are all ways to, you can use it as a, as a tool to kind of, again, modify those existing lessons we have or create your own if you would like. For middle school and you know, high school and even upper elementary stu schools, Studio is also a tool students can use. Um, and so they can actually create their own projects in Studio, uploading content, adding audio files, adding video um, to communicate their information or their understanding of information really quickly and easily. So Studio can be, again, used from, for teachers for delivering content, but also can be used for students to create and showcase their understanding of key information. So again, Studio is a, a really powerful tool. I'm going to do a couple more searches for you, and then I'm going to pause for a second, and we're going to do an activity together. So bear with me for just a moment as I dive in a little deeper. So we did a little bit with some of the ready-to-use lessons. We did some things with um, oh, our um, interactive opportunities. I'm going to show you another one that's really popular. So this is audiobooks. While you're navigating, Brad, uh, we had a quick question. Uh, Please ask. Or, uh, if they can edit those studio boards after you share. Yes. So once yes. Uh, you share the studio board, anybody can make a copy of it and edit it as they see fit, just like Brad showed just a moment ago. Yeah. And um, the uh, as far as being able to turn them in to be able to grade, mm -hmm. uh, you're able to do that as well. They'll show up if you assign them to your students as an activity. Uh, they'll show up in your My Classrooms tab and uh, there's a, a next navigation tab to assignments and uh, that mm -hmm. shows up that uh, shows yeah you, thanks brad um my classroom's right there on the home screen and then the assignments tab shows up right below classroom so there you'll be able to see anything that you have assigned uh to a specific student or your entire classroom and, and i'm logged in right now as a uh, teacher or actually a nurse in one of the schools there in Anne arundel obviously doesn't have a class so i can't see any information there but that would where that's where it would show up right here. Thanks, Brad. Yeah, thank you. So let's go back. I'm gonna do my little search again for audiobooks. So audiobooks, a lot of people don't know. We have a, a phenomenal collection of audiobooks that are available to you. Um, when you open those up, they're organized by grade band of K5, 6, 8, and 9, 12. I'll just go through some of the K5 so you see that those like Call of the Wild, uh, 39 Clues are there. If you have kids of your own, even littles um, in your house, there's some great ones there for uh, my young kids. But for 6-8, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, Goosebump Series, Hunger Games, um, Leaves of Grass, Pride and Prejudice, um, White Fang, Ch Chasing Lincoln's Killer, um, 
you'll see a full story of uh, the short stories of Edgar Allan Poe. So again, a ton of audiobooks that are available. If you want to grab you some high flyers, you want to grab something for higher levels, you can find additional ones, Journey to the Interior of the Earth, um, Violet and other, ta uh, other Tales, Frankenstein. Those are all there as well. And those audiobooks can be downloaded and used in um, you know on devices so kids can access them outside of just their um, computer if they want to use them on an iPhone or something like that. They have that capability as well. So audiobooks is something else just to be helpful as you're searching. One other piece I want to highlight for you is if someone will give me a topic you're getting ready to study or you're studying right now in the chat window, if you'll put that in there, I'll have Christian call it out for me. I want to just model something that can be really helpful as you're searching for content. Uh, Titanic. Titanic. When you do a keyword search, Whenever you do a keyword search, the first thing that's going to pop up, so here's a channel. Again, channels are curated content collections. So if I'm studying the Titanic, add it to my channels. That's great. But one of the other things to be mindful of is um, when you do a search, it's searching by relevancy by default. Um, that just means the way our relevancy search works is it looks for does it match the keyword is the first priority. Second priority is how popular is that resource? Now, that can be a little off-putting at times because teachers have used content for years at Discovery, and so it tracks all the uses of that over year over year. And so sometimes the uh, older videos will, or older resources will come up instead of newer ones. The ways, to, One of the easiest ways to fix that or augment that search result is to come over here where it says sort by relevancy and choose sort by recently added. And now I can find the newest content to any keyword search. So this way you can filter out and find the newest resources all built out. Quick, easy um, adjustment you can make. Just choose recently added. If you do most popular, again, that's going to filter out by most popular. But you have a variety of ways of filtering content. Likewise, when you do a filter, you can look for videos. This has videos, it has channels, it has imagery, and it has text. Other things, if I do something like cells for a second, I can filter again by recently added. And then I can look at videos, interactives, activities, channels, imagery, text, audio files, a variety of things that we can use. So those are in place, just ways you can filter out. You can also filter by grade level. So if I want to make sure the resources I'm looking at are age and developmentally appropriate. You know, it's not going to be something that my kids are going to look at and go, oh, my God, that's such a cartoon image. Um, you know, 6, 8 is going to filter out any of those kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, fifth grade level content. Um, and then I can filter again now by area. The one thing that can be thrown off as far as your search filtering out by types of media, if you click on interactives, and then you click on activities, it's searching and pulling both of those. It's kind of like a toggle on or off. So either you toggle one on, you toggle one off, one on, and then it just filters them out. So again, it's, it's tagging both those right now. So if I turn off activities, now it's just showing videos. If I turn off videos, it just defaults to all. So just know that you can filter out materials that way as well. All right, we're gonna do a little activity with you guys. Something just to be mindful of, there's a series of resources called Spotlight on Strategies. If you type in the word SOS in our search window, there are student learning activity videos, and then there's also, and oh, you know, I'm in 6 8, that's why it's not coming up. There's a full list of instructional strategies here. And in these, these are broken down by skill, summarizing, inference, and prediction point of view and purpose, sequencing, whatever it is you're looking for. There are some that are student facing videos. Some are teacher facing activities. So the teachers would be the lead on those. That's fine. But I'm going to pull up the student facing or student learning videos. And we're going to use one called an AEIOU. I'm going to play it for you like you if you were students in my classroom. So you can kind of experience what it would be like. But then we're going to have you do this in a chat window to respond. So I'm going to go ahead and play this video. It's about a minute and 45 seconds long, and then we'll do the activity. You don't need to use paper and pencil. It's going to tell you to. 
Don't worry about it. Um, we'll do it orally or through the chat window. So here we go. Hey, Brad, before you start yep. uh, with yep. a quick question, uh, actually, I don't even know the answer to this. Maybe you might. Uh, are any of the audio books in Spanish at all? There are some. So let's go back to that for a second. Then I'll come back to this. Hold on here. Great question. So if you go in, there are some, and I'm trying to think of which ones they are. Let me see. Oh, there's a better way for me to do this. Hold on. I'm doing it the hard way. The keyboard search for audiobooks. And come over here to language, Spanish. And then if you if you filter by Spanish, you can find any of the audiobooks available in Spanish. Awesome. Thanks for that, Brad. Sure. Yep. Thank you for asking. I appreciate whoever that was. Something we don't get very often. So, all right, let me go back to these SOS. And we're going to go to these student learning videos. And we'll do the AEIOU. I'm going to play this video. Here we go. A E I O U. One of the first things you ever learned at school was probably A E I O U. Okay, and sometimes why? Here's a fresh spin on A E I O U, and this one will help you summarize big ideas about what you learn, think about how it makes you feel, and note what you find interesting or have questions about. You'll need a piece of paper and something to write with. First, write A E I O U down the side of your paper, like this, A, E, I, O, U. Now, next to each letter, make a note of what it stands for. A is for adjective. An adjective is a word that describes something like colorful or fast. E is for emotion. This is where you'll note how something made you feel. I is for interesting. What did you find interesting? O is for O. Was there anything that surprised you? U is for um. That's the sound you make when you have questions or are confused. So jot down something you're unsure of or want to learn more about. Your paper should look something like this. A, adjective. E, emotion. I, interesting. O, O. U, um. When you're ready, watch a video read an article, or listen to some audio. Pause when you need to and make notes in the right place. You may want to watch, listen, or read again in order to fill in your categories. When you're done, you have a set of notes that describes what you learned, how it made you feel, why it was interesting and surprising, and what you can learn about next. All right. So now we'll do the AEIOU using the chat window. Um, if you don't mind, in the chat window, give us an adjective that describes something you've seen so far today. Engaging, interactive, we've got a lot of engaging. Good. All right, and the emotion you're feeling so far. Excited, curious, shocked, intrigued. I like all of those. <laughs> those are great. I haven't gotten shocked before. That's great. I like that. All right. I, something interesting you saw today so far. And we're not finished yet, but just we're getting going. So, audio books, the lesson plans, uh, the ability to add questions to videos. Good. All right. And then, oh, something that surprised you, hopefully in a good way. Ready to use videos with questions of the quiz library. Mm -hmm. uh, how easy it seems. Uh, the translations. 
All the things like that. <laughs> All right. Then the you, if you have questions, feel free to put those in the chat window. If they're, uh, you've done a great job so far asking questions. We go and we, I mean, I, I mean this sincerely. We love getting questions from folks because that makes sure and tells us first you're really in, in tune with what we're doing, but also you want to learn more about something and we're here to help you guys out. So um, feel free to ask those questions as you go in. I'm going to take just a moment now. And I, I'm going to dive with you guys a little deeper into quiz. But in order to do this really well, I need to go out of your out of the Anne Arundel account. I need to go to mine. And the reason for that is I have data in my quiz builder. And it just shows, it gives you more of an indication of what it can do. So we do have a couple, uh, couple of questions there, Brad, yep. since we're going into quiz. Uh, uh, can you add your own videos to make quizzes? Not yet. Um, that's a question we've gotten from a few places. Um, well, yes and no. Um, in Quiz Maker, in our Quiz Builder, no. But you could add a video into Studio. And when you add a, stu uh, into a video into Studio, let's just go into one of these. You have the ability when you're in Studio, let it load. You can go right here and upload from my device. So I can go in and add a file. I don't have a small enough video that I want to use, but I'm going to grab the screenshot. Uh, actually, we'll grab something else. Let's see here. What's on it? That's an long video. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't have any short videos, I don't think, right now. Um, all right. You can grab a video um, and um, put that in here, upload it. And then when you put it on here, you can put in your own questions in Studio. So that way you could do it. In our quiz builder, you can't do that yet, but we're looking at seeing if that's something we can do down the road. And the same would go for uh, adding uh, music or any audio. Uh, same would be in studio as well. Yes. Yep. Exactly. Okay. We're going to die. Any other questions before, question before I go into quiz a little deeper? Nope. That was it. Cool. All right. We're going to go into quiz. And quiz is a really powerful tool that a lot of people just aren't aware of. Um, in quiz, there is a quiz library that's here and you can filter by grade band again, six, eight, find pre-made quiz, uh, quizzes that are out here. Here's one on the rock cycle, um, looking at process of photosynthesis, uh, Michael Jordan, how confident do you feel? Those kind of things are out there. So you can do that. You can also, if I go back to quizzes here, I can create my own quizzes. Now, when you go to quiz, you can, um, we're going to come in and do, we're actually going to do this one together in a moment. But I'm going to go to build a new quiz because I want you to see, you can do a video quiz. That's just like what we showed you earlier, putting questions on top of a video. Um, but we're going to go to standard quiz because I want you to see the options here. And the types of questions you can ask, you can answer, ask a short answer. You can ask a poll, a multiple choice, a multiple select, draw, annotate, audio. And with these, if you go in, we'll just do, I'm going to click poll real quick. I can upload an image if I want to in here. So I'm going to go grab a picture here. Here, we've got that one. And I can ask my students a question. Actually, I have no idea what kind of planet it is, so I'm just going to put anything in here. Um, anything I can spell, at least. <laughs> so we're going to put in here a fern, and we'll put in here a... Um, right. I can put those in there. I can do a poll question. I can put, again, an image in here um, as I'm going. When I'm ready, click Save, and that's going to put that question in, in there for me. Um, now I can go in here and I can add another question, but this can't, can't time, maybe I want to put in an annotate. I'm going to upload that same image again. And the reason I want to show this is because now what this will allow my students to do is they'll be able to draw on top of that image. They could label parts of a plant or how nutrients flow. So I want them to label how nutrients flow from the soil to the, um, leaves. So I could put that in there and have it. Um, you can also do audio questions. And so, oops, I didn't mean to do it, change it that way. There we go. Save that one and I'll put a new question. 
I could also have my kids do a audio question. Maybe I want them to respond to something that I uh, that we did in class and I want an audio recording of it. They could do that as well. So that's all different types of questions you can do really quickly and easily. Let me just show you what happens with, with the annotate for a moment. I'm gonna go to my quiz results here. And we're gonna go down to, I think it's page two I had this on. I really need to remember where I put this one. There we go. Uh, nope, that's not it. Uh, demo quiz, this one here, I think, has it. Here's a student, and I did this activity just to model it for folks. Here's the question. Label how water and nutrients flow through a plant, and now I can see their response. And this is where a student would has just typed on and labeled it with drawings and pictures, or, or drawing and words on top of the image. So they can annotate things. And this doesn't have to be a science activity. This could be anything. Um, that you're working with um, as they're going through those activities. So real quick and easy way to do things. Any of the results can be, let me go back to that for a second. It's a, it's a good place to point that out. Actually, we're gonna go pull up a different one just for a second, different set of results. Uh, let's go, that's only two students. Let me go this one here. Here we go, got this one here. So these are all audio responses, um, but I can export all the data from anything that's been graded. In order to mark a qu answer res response great, correct, I can just go into it, click on needs grading, and look at each in here. In this case, it's going to hear each student's response. We'll just click on this one here. Heck yeah. Government official, he wants to make sure that he benefits from the taxes and the, and the, the sale of land and all the things associated with it. Absolutely. And so I can mark that if I like it correct. Do the same thing with each of these as I go down through them so that they're getting scored as I go through those activities. So real quick, easy way to grade those as mm -hmm. you're using them. So those are just ways you can use existing kind of stand, what we call standard quizzes. Before I go into the next part of quiz, any questions on that? Mm -hmm. Are any lingering questions on something else um, that you're seeing? I have a quick question. <laughs> so for the audio, I see that I answer my own question. So the students are talking with audio, but can the teacher also act with audio? Not yet. We're working on seeing if we can add that functionality in, but not yet. Okay. Oh, well. Any others, Christian, or anybody else who wants to come off mute, feel free. Yes, we had another question. Do students okay. need to be enrolled in our class in DE to see quiz results? Um, they do need to be in your class to see quiz results. There are ways for kids to come in as a guest participant, but then they can't, that data just doesn't get stored for them. They're just, it, it, there's no way for them to review that because they're not listed in your class that way. And uh, can we add students to our classes? Yes. Yep. Uh, Christian, do you want to talk about how, how that goes through your, with the SSO? Yes, yeah, so there's already um, uh, the single sign-on, and all of your all of your classrooms should be up to date. Uh, if for some reason you have a brand new student that hasn't uh, populated in the nightly sync, you definitely can. If you go to any of your classrooms within uh, the the My Classrooms tab from the home screen, and you select the respective classroom that you'd like to add that student to, you can add them directly from there. Uh, or uh, if uh, they, if a student does not have an active profile, uh, you can go ahead and just shoot me an email. I'll go ahead and uh, create their profile for the time being and add them to the classroom that you need me to class uh, to add them to as well. You go to manage this classroom in order to add a student. Yep. All right, we're going to do this last activity pretty quickly. So I'm going to show you something you can actually participate in. Um, it should work. We're going to test it out here. I'm going to go to what's called a live quiz. Think about all the times you go in your classroom and you just want to have an oral question uh, opportunity with your class. We know what happens. We have what's called, I call the Hermione Granger um, situation where we know the kid who's going to raise their hand every single time they answer the question. We know Hermione is going to get it right every single time. No offense. I don't need to know what Hermione knows. I know she knows the answer. I need to know what the Ron Weasleys of the world knows. He's going to be re very reluctant to answer that. Um, let's see, I'm going to type this in and delete me later on. And so I, how can I get a kid to be able to respond without feeling uncomfortable? So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to put this link right into the chat window. So bear with me for a second. 
I'm going to put this link. If you'll click this link in your computer to join this quiz. And as you start to join, I'll see your names appear right here. Great. All of you doing an awesome job of this. If you don't quite make it in time, it's okay. And what I can do now is I can get ready to unlock. I'm going to do what's called unlock student devices. And as I do that, I can start asking questions. And when I ask a question, you can put in a response and I'll show you what happens. So we'll have a little fun with this. So I'm going to ask the question, what's your favorite thing you saw today? So what's your favorite thing that you saw today? So type in your response. You'll see that I'm seeing how many people responded. I've got two, uh, three of 11, three of 12 in here so far as it goes through. Give people a chance to respond. Notice right now the names are all hidden. That's intentional. Um, what I can do now is I can start, once I'm ready, I'm going to click on show answers. And I can see the answers from everybody without singling out a child. We can pull up one and say, hey, someone really likes audiobooks. Let's talk about audiobooks and why they're so great. Oh, you know, any question a student responds to, I can do that and I can pull them up without showing out who that student is. If I want to mark something correct in here, I can go ahead and do that. Each of you are going to get a mark on your end. You're going to see that it's gotten marked correct on your side. If I want to mark one incorrect. If I saw where Christian was, I'd mark his incorrect just to give him a hard time. Um, I can pull a random answer that we can talk about. Happen to pull up the same one I just did. We'll do it again. Another person with audiobooks. There we go. Or I can, at the end of class, if I want to, I can want to see whose names they were. I can show the names if I want to. That's fine. And then I also can do an exit ticket activity. I know we're right at time, so I'm going to do this very quickly. If you click on exit ticket, how are you feeling about today? Do you feel more confident than before? I need more practice. It's too difficult. And so this is something I can do with my class to get a sense of where their comfort level is. And you can have fun with this, folks. Put in there, it's too difficult. You're not going to hurt my feelings. Just to get a sense of how it reads, it's a cool little thing to play with. Um, and I'm going to get all that data as well. When we're done, and I can ask as many questions as I wanted to. If I want to ask another question, I just go right here. But when I'm finished, I hit the word finish right here. And I'll show you what happens on my end. All the data gets pulled out. And now I see all of my students. First, I see their exit ticket activity. I can look at the question view and I can see all the kids and every question they responded to and exactly what their answers were. But when it's first coming up in my classroom, no one knows who it is. So kids can, that wallflower that's in your classroom can be comfortable responding without worrying about, you know, looking a certain way or having someone call them out for it. They just see their answer on the screen without having their name tied to it. So it's a really great little activity you can use to have kids respond quickly and easily. All right, I know we're right at time, so I apologize. I'm actually a minute over. That's a bad on me. Um, hopefully you enjoyed today's session. There is an attendance form that Stephanie has put into the, please be sure to fill that out. Um, and if you, hopefully you got some things. If you did not learn anything new, please call me out on it and I will find something you did not know you could do with Discovery Education. But have a great rest of your day. Thank you, everyone. Okay, looks like we're good. Thank you so Thanks. much. Take care. All right, see ya, bye.